Curious about what CSS variables are, how they work, and how you can use them in your projects? Well, you're in the right place. Let's go check them out. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn how to build the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. This is the beginning of a deep dive into CSS variables. CSS variables are amazing. They're really, really cool. I'm happy they're here. Browser support is almost amazing. And this video itself is just the start of a mini series or a deep dive into CSS variables. And in this video, we're just looking at what they even are and how you can start using them in your projects today. Okay guys, so before we get into how to actually write your own CSS custom properties, the first thing I wanna look at is why they're really cool. Um, so just this is just a really simple site that I've come up and built with, and I've applied some, I've used my custom properties to build this out. So here we can see I have this dark color. Now let's just say I change dark to red. It's gonna change here, but it's also gonna change everything down here because I've used that property in multiple places. If you're used to uh, SAS variables, this might seem really familiar with you. There are a lot of similarities, but there are some big differences between them as well. Um, so just another example here is section padding. Let's say I make that zero. Everything is going to stick together. Now you might say, well, I just put that in one spot. Um, so here I have my section padding. I have my section padding. I have my section padding. So I only have to change it in one place and it's going to change throughout the site everywhere that I've used it. So you can probably see why that would be really, really useful. And just one last thing just to show you here, uh, we also have this white color. So say I change my white over to red, it's going to change the color of this text, this over here, and my background color there all at the same time. So it just makes it so we don't have to try and hunt down things, either just using like a find and replace type of thing in your code editor or hunting them down manually, which is, oh, that's terrible. Um, so let's go over to this, and this is the same thing, but with no custom variables used anywhere. And we can look at how we can actually write one. And it's really easy to do it. Um, the one thing you have to do is you have to define it inside of a selector. So if you're used to something like SAS, you can just make a variable. It doesn't have to be inside of something. But with CSS custom properties, they do have to be defined. And that's because they're custom properties. They act as variables, but just like font size is a property, we're making a new property. We're inventing the property. But our browser knows what font size is, so we can easily change it for us. It doesn't know what our custom property is, so we have to define what it is while we're creating it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, so just in my body, I could actually declare them there, but where you're gonna see the most often declared is root. Now, if you've never seen root before, it's going to the root element of your page, which is always pretty much in any HTML page will be your HTML element. The reason we put them on the root, um, it's a bit higher specificity than putting HTML. And it also just, it's convenient to group everything together in one spot. Um, so it just keeps it all together. And by putting it on as in your root or your HTML element, what it's allowing you to do is it, they're becoming global properties. So you can use them throughout your site because as we're going to see these properties cascade down. So to define a variable, it's really easy or a custom property. I'm gonna call them variables now just because that's what everyone calls them. The first thing is two hyphens. So you just do hyphen, hyphen, dash, dash, minus sign, minus sign, whatever you wanna call them. I do two of those and then I write the name of it. So I write the name of my variable, I put a colon, and then I write the value that I wanna give that variable. So it's always gonna be name and value. So it's just like writing your own you know, font size, you're writing the property, you're writing the thing here. And it's these two dashes that let it that let the browser know it's a custom property and not a normal property. So let's just say I come in here and I say uh, my primary color is 456. And so now I've defined my variable primary color as hash 456. Now I want to actually use that in my document. This is where um, it's a little bit heavy to write, I guess. Um, I wish they'd come up with a better syntax to be honest with you, but that's okay. Let's just say on my body here, I want to use it. So I can say color, and now I want to use that custom property, or I want to use my variable. So I'm telling it it's a variable. So I put var, open and close parentheses, and inside the parentheses, I write the name of my variable. So I do hyphen hyphen primary color. And it's a little dark, you probably didn't see a change. Let's just make it red so we can really see it going. There we go, and you can see that it's all changed. It just works like that. 
Now, one thing that's really important to know about the prime um, about these, as I mentioned earlier, is that they cascade uh, just like anything else. And again, that's why we're writing them in the root. We want them to be global things that we can use anywhere in our document. Because let's say over here, um, I have this little intro thing. So let's say I come in here and I write second. Well, I'll put it at the top. If you're going to do them, whoops, inside a, a selector, I'd say to put them at the top just to make them easier to see. So let's say I make a secondary color here, and we'll call this one. Uh, let's make this. I'm gonna make this one steel blue. So now what I could do is in here I could say that the color of my text is var and secondary color. Oops, color. And you can see up here, this is the only thing I have in my intro, and that's changed to my secondary color. And then I'm going to go, oh, well, you know what? I'd like all of this stuff to be that as well. So there's my sales points. So let's come down here and do sales points. And in here we'll do color is var secondary color. And it doesn't work. I'm also getting an error. But there we go, it's gone. Um, so this isn't working, and it's because I've declared this secondary color inside of intro. That means I can only use it inside of intro. I can't actually use it anywhere else. So for something like this, it is important to know, and this is why we generally don't declare them inside of selectors like this, because it gets limited to this area. So what I'm gonna do is, um, oh, one thing you will notice is it doesn't break the site. One thing with SAS variables, if you're used to using those, if you put in an invalid one, your SAS won't compile. With this, it's just going to ignore it. It's going to go, oh, I don't know what this is, so I'm ignoring it. It would be the same as if you did, like, padding 50 pixels. I misspelled padding. It doesn't break my CSS file. It just doesn't know what this is, so it ignores it. So one nice thing with them is if you made a mistake somewhere, whether it's a spelling mistake or something else, um, it will still work. Well, your site will still work. It's just that one property will not work. You can also create like a mini fallback. So you can say if secondary color isn't working, make my text yellow. That's another option as well. So I want it to be secondary color, but if for some reason this isn't working, you can put yellow. Um, this could be useful for troubleshooting problems because if secondary color is working, it's going to ignore this. So if I am this one, which is my text here at the top, if I add yellow here, it's not going to change because secondary color is working. So it's using this one first, and then if this doesn't work, it's going to use this one. Over here, this isn't working, so it's falling back to yellow. So this could be useful for just debugging issues. You could throw in this and see what happens, um, and you could find any mistakes, either spelling mistakes or badly declared variables or whatever it is. This does not count for browser support. We're going to be looking at browser support in another video. Um, but we'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of this. Um, and I'm just going to take this secondary, and I'm going to do a cut. And let's move it all the way back up. Go to my root and declare it down here. And now they've all changed. Yay! So that's why we usually declare them in the root. One thing that you can do, which is interesting, is you can overwrite things uh, when in different places. So let's say here um, on my H1, we're gonna say my, actually let's just do it on all of them, H1, H2, H3. We're gonna give them the color of var secondary color. So they've all changed. And intro, we're gonna take this off for a second. Okay. So all of my headings now are using my secondary color. And we're going to make it so it's only that, just so we don't have any confusion. There we go. So we can see all my headings are using the secondary color, which is this blue color here. Now, one thing that I can do is inside of different areas, I can actually redefine a sec um, what my variable is. So here on my intro, which is this text that's up here at the top, right now, my whole site is seeing secondary color as steel blue. And my H1 is using that secondary color. But what I could do is I could say in my intro, secondary color, whoops. Oh yeah, that's right. Secondary color is uh, green. And you'll see it actually changed it only here. This is the same behavior 
as if you had um, your body. You put, uh, or here I have a font size of 0.9, and then I go on my sales points here, and I say the font size is 1.5 rem. In that area, the font size is gonna get a lot bigger because I've overwritten my body's font size. The exact same thing is happening here. I'm overwriting the secondary colors, what the property is. So it, everywhere in my site, it's steel blue, except my intro, it's uh, green. And then I could come on this one and I could say that in here, secondary color is actually yellow. And it's gonna change these ones to yellow. Now, this can have its purposes, but please do be careful with it because it's not, you're sort of defeating the purpose of using the variables in a way if you're redefining them throughout your site, and it's going to make it just as hard to go back through your site to um, fix them. But it is important to understand that they cascade just like everything else does with CSS. Um, but in general, and we're going to look at a, an exception for this when we get to one of our videos where we build out some stuff. Um, so just be careful with this. There are cases where you want to do this, but it can be a dangerous proposition at times. And it also defeats the purpose of using variables if you're just redefining them constantly. The whole point of these is so you can have everything defined in one spot, and then you can automatically change it or update it as you're going by only changing one thing instead of having to dig through all your other things. Whereas if you have variables defined everywhere, what's the point, right? So just try and keep them as much as possible and where it makes sense in the root because um, that's where they're most useful. And that's CSS variables in a nutshell. I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a comment down below to let me know. Hit the like button if you liked the video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can get new videos like this every single week. In the next video, we're looking at how we can use CSS variables in a more concrete example instead of something like this, which is, you know, I think you got probably have a good idea, but uh, something a little bit more complex. I look forward to seeing you there. And don't forget, until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.